Hi, I'm Kenny Long, and thanks for joining me on the U Drive U Network. In previous episodes, we've talked about setting up a QuickBooks subscription and creating invoices. Today, I want to explain how you receive a payment against those invoices. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward. You receive the money, you put it into your bank account. But we also want to talk about a little bit more complicated situations where the full amount may not be deposited directly into your accounts. Maybe there are some deductions or short pays on the invoices. We'll dive into that right now. When you first log into QuickBooks Online, you start on this dashboard screen. These widgets reflect the overall health of your company. You can see that we already have some invoices created. In the last video, we created an invoice. If you need to learn how to create an invoice, click the link above, watch that video, and then come back to this one. We can see that we have $6,650 overdue. $2,600 is not due yet. If we simply click on the Invoices widget, it opens this Invoices window. This gives us a little bit more information and lists the invoices that we have currently outstanding. This one, you can see under status, is overdue by one day. That is the invoice that is reflected by this orangish color bar here. To start, let's assume that we received the $2,600 from Patriot Star Logistics in this column. Simply click Receive Payment. The Receive Payment button opens the Receive Payment window. First, make sure that the appropriate customer is selected. If you came to the screen through the Invoices tab, it will probably be pre-populated, but make sure that that's correct. Next, make sure the payment date is selected properly. If the customer paid you on time, but you didn't enter it until later, you want to make sure that the customer gets the appropriate credit. You certainly don't want to mark them late when it wasn't their fault. For the purposes of this example, we'll just assume that they did pay on March 8th. The payment method. They could pay you by cash, check, credit card, or any other method that you choose. You can add a method. I already made the EFT, or electronic funds transfer. They made a direct deposit. Where did they deposit it to? This is extremely important. For the purposes of this example, we will assume that they paid 100% of the total bill and they made a direct deposit into our bank. This is the easiest, most straightforward way to do it. Deposit into my bank checking. If you don't already have your bank account set up here, you can add new and create it right now. This customer paid us the entire amount. Payment is listed here, $2,600. Click Save and New. And that's completed. That customer has paid us. Let's close out of the payment screen. And you can see here that that amount has been deposited, $2,600. And the balance due is $0. We no longer have to worry about collecting from this customer. Now let's look at one that's a bit more complicated. I created this invoice to XYZ Sample Carrier to reflect what an owner-operator might send to a carrier that they're leased to. Let's click into it. When we look at this invoice, we see that it shows multiple loads that this truck did, from Georgia to Illinois, Illinois to New Jersey, Jersey back to Illinois, Illinois to Missouri. The total for the week was $6,650. Let's show how you receive payment from a carrier click Receive Payment. We got to this screen through the Invoice tab, so the customer is already pre-populated, XYZ Sample Carrier. The payment date was on March 7th, which was on time, but let's look at what the settlement sheet might look like. Here is just a rough copy of what a settlement might reflect. The line haul pay for the week was $6,650. That was the total amount that we invoiced for. But the carrier advanced money throughout the week to buy fuel. $1,285. They also deduct an insurance payment each week, $148. The total deposit was $5,217. How do we reflect that in QuickBooks? First, we know that the entire amount of $6,650 did not go into the checking account. So let's change that to undeposited funds. We did not make that entire deposit, so it's undeposited but the carrier did actually pay $6,650. So this payment has been received in full. That part is done, save and close. We see on the invoices screen again that we received the payment of $6,650, but it is not deposited. We have to go into deposit funds to put these into the appropriate accounts. Click on the new button on the left side of the screen. Under other, click bank deposit. That opens the bank deposit screen. 
we are going to deposit the appropriate amount into my bank checking. The deposit was made on the 7th. It was received from this invoice, which was XYZ sample carrier, $6,650. So go ahead and select that box. In the column beneath that, add funds to this deposit, we need to allocate where the additional funds went. We can select who the customer was that paid us and select which account it goes to. So we know that there was a fuel amount, fuel oil additives, and that was in the amount of $1,285. This amount is deducted from the total that was paid by the carrier, so we'll subtract that $1,285. We also had an insurance payment that was deducted from the settlement. So select the account for insurance. Also deducted from the total deposit was $148. Make sure you put a negative $148. The total deducted was $1,433, leaving a total deposit with $5,217, which goes back to my bank checking. Go ahead, select save and close. Now we are back to the invoices screen where we can see that that invoice has been paid and the money has been deposited. If we go to the reports tab on the left side of the screen, then select profit and loss statement, we can see that we were paid total of $9,250 to reflect both invoices that we deposited today. The fuel, oil and additives, $1,285, reflected as a cost of goods sold, which leaves our gross profit, $7,965, our insurance expense was $148, leaving $7,817. Since our bank account started at zero, we should be able to see that reflected in our chart of accounts under my bank checking, $7,817. And there you have it. That is how you receive money against your invoices. Now that you know how to create an invoice and receive payments, you can start tracking your income. And as you've seen, you can also start to track some of your expenses through these basic methods. In future videos, we'll talk about more complicated situations such as using a factoring company and loans payable. Until then, remember, dream big, aim high, strategize your plan, and earn your success because you don't deserve it until you earn it, and only you drive you.